Listen, you, you're entitled to spend your time however you like. You're also entitled to... And, and I'm not even saying that you should be spending more time being productive, but when you start to say things like 36,000 hours in a single game isn't even that much, it's simply not possible that like your life is in any semblance of order. And I'm saying that from a place of, of judgment, but also a place of like, I, I want to help a little bit. Like that's, that's a staggering amount of time. I think I think you might be right. I think there might be more time than I've spent playing video games total across all video games in my entire life. What's your hours in Isaac? I don't know, like, let me check. I don't, I'm going to assume that it's in, like, the 2000s. Okay, it's four. In Rebirth, it's 4,000. And then probably in Flash, played Flash for like three years. Let's add another, even if we add 2,000, which I don't think it would be, that's 6,000. And I was playing too much of it, to, like to the point that it was comical. That's over the course of literally 11 years. And also that's one-sixth of the of 36,000. That's a lot, man. 36,000 is crazy. Only 32,000 left. I mean, I don't even know what would be like second. <laughs> it would probably be, probably some, I, I couldn't even hazard a guess, quite frankly. Probably something in the, in the 500s, maybe? Like, let me see what I got on PUBG. 484.7 hours, and then another 20 on the test server. To be fair, about 90% of that is just hoping there's not maintenance, but SAP's got to be getting up there. You're not wrong. Super auto pets. I have 500 hours on Steam. I bet I have 534, to be specific. Probably like another 150 on mobile, maybe another 75 on the test build. So you're getting maybe like the... 700s or something but still i mean we're adding like <laughs> we got to get we're not getting the 36,000 let me put it that way 10,000 hours in hearthstone man i just i mean to be honest like I, again i'm not saying like i'm built different i'm I, I just like so i have 878 hours in dota that was over um basically two summers and that's real quick right like the, for for in in six months to put nine well, probably like eight months to put 900 hours in a game i got to the point where i was like if i keep this up like year round my life's gonna fall apart and that's why i quit it cold turkey because i would have been it, it would have just been too much i cut the thread as soon as i saw it becoming a problem i had to do that with lost ark when i had 178 hours in two weeks holy cow <laughs> Again, are there even 178 hours in two weeks? Okay, yeah, there, there's, there's about double that, I suppose. Just back of the napkin calculation. It took you 9,000 hours to see it was becoming a problem? It's nine, 900 hours. Are you, are you baiting me with the Elon Musk thing? That's like Elon Musk spent $44 billion on Twitter. There's uh, 7 billion people on Earth. He could have given each of them $7 million instead. I think Steam is lying about my hours. I got the game early 2020, got the last the last challenge in December 2020. Listen, again, I'm not trying to put you on blast. I know it's an idle game, so you're not like actively doing anything. But like, is, you said you put in 18,000 hours in one year. I'm just like, okay, 24 times 365 is 8,760 hours. That means like 90% of the time, 90% of that year, your game was open. Yeah. So that means you left it, just again, back of the napkin calculation. So you left your computer on 24-7 with the game open six nights a week. And then also, then like one eight-hour session, you maybe turned your computer off and then booted it again in the morning. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out the, 
<laughs> the calculation here. <laughs> Maybe Steam is lying, okay? I don't know. It's at least it's an idle game. Like, I, to be, I, I mean, as long as I'm passing judgment here as an INTJ, you know, 1,800 hours, or sorry, 8,000 hours <laughs> in an idle game is like not as bad as 2,000 hours in an active game, I think. But, wait, I got, I got it all backwards here. My, my math's getting all twisted up. I mean, it, it, listen, people say I'm obsessed with the Peloton. I had uh, 12,000 last year. 12,000 minutes to put that into hours. I mean, I don't even know. That's like, uh, it's, it's, the math is impossible. I don't know. It's like a 2,000 hours. <laughs> I don't think so. 200 hours? That sounds more like it. Yeah, 200 hours. Bought me a pair of Blundstones. Gotta say, this shit comfy as hell. I love my Blundstones, but there is some Blundstone hubris, Okay. Because I wore them so much, I thought that I broke the boots in. I thought that I softened the leather so that they didn't hurt me anymore. And then I, you know, we had like those blizzards, right? So I wasn't doing as much walking. And then I, uh, I've been walking a little bit more in the past like couple of weeks. And I got the callus back on the back of my right heel. So what I realized is I did not break in the Blundstones. The Blundstones actually broke in me. And they got me tricked into... Th I, like, I, I had calloused the, the back of my heel to the point where it wasn't hurting anymore. And then my skin was like, okay, now we're softening because you haven't been walking as much. And now I got, you know, I got a blister again. But it's not... It's okay. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> Same thing happened with me. It's just boots, man. I mean, that's the price you pay for boots, I think. I can deal with a little bit of a blister. It's not a big deal. If anything, no, it's not because it's, uh, it's not because the boots are too tight. If anything, it's because the boots are a little bit too uh, loose. So I have insoles that tighten them up a little bit. I don't really know the kinematics of it, but uh, my hope is if I just keep wearing them outside in the rain, one day they'll, they'll shrink up a little bit. But they, you know, once I, once I break my foot in, they do well. Let's put it that way. I like the Blundstones, though. I also, the honestly underrated part of the Blundstones is that everyone wears them. So when you're outside, you really feel like a part of society. I would say there's probably like a 20% chance in Vancouver that when you look at someone's shoes, they're wearing Blundstones. So I really feel like I'm, I'm part of a tribe, honestly. Did you see that Megan has a 97 on Rotten Tomatoes? Nobody in history believed me when I said this movie could be the Bell of the Ball. I thought it was going to have like a 9.7, to be fair. It's got a 97, dude. By the way, are we all going to see Megan uh, on Friday? My, my Twitter timeline has been inundated with ads for Megan. I, uh, I think I have to see this movie. It's about a, a robot bodyguard for a child. But here's the thing. She goes rogue. I think it has a chance to be either deliberate camp in a good way or possibly so bad it's good. It's, it seems like the highest possible candidate. The best candidate, the highest midichlorian count for so bad it's good movie in a long time. <laughs> Hello, it's me again. Talk to the hand because the face doesn't want to hear it anymore. Talk to what hand? Talk to your hand? Their entire marketing for it was a TikTok dance? I know, that's why I got to see it. Hold on. It's only the first week of January, but we already have one of the best villains of 2023. The jump scares are fun, and the Megan is a funny thrill ride that elicits more giggles than groans. A cautionary tale about a deranged dancing doll. Sign me up. There's enough humor to keep the proceedings edgy enough, but it's hard not to wish the filmmakers would have taken a cue from their eponymous villain and really push things past the boundaries of good taste. Hold on to your wigs because the next queer monster has arrived and she's got better rhythm than the Babadook. Okay, I don't know about that one. I, I don't know if I'm qualified to interpret that review, but it is, it is a fresh tomato. <laughs> 
I also have not seen the Babadook, so I, I feel like I, I'm out of the loop on this one. In one of the best first movies of the year in recent memory, you'll see why the doll on everyone's lips will be Megan. A hilariously campy mess. And that's all we needed. An intelligently unhinged work that updates the killer doll subgenre for the modern era. It's the unholy love child of Child's Play and The Terminator with a welcome skewering of technological dependence. Hopefully this isn't the last time we see Megan on our screens. It's a fun introduction, but it'll like you, likely leave you hoping for an even more bananas round two. Holy cow! I don't... Dude, it's... It's gonna make a... Meganillion dollars! The Megan, the Meganessance. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta take a, a a little Windows snip of this, and I'm gonna dot. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna dot at my uh, my wife on this one. I'll just add her, and I'm gonna just type "We going." That's stunning to me. It has an IMDb of six point two. Yeah, critics know what they're talking about, and. The average moviegoer just wants to see a sequel to the shit that they watched last year. No disrespect. If I wanted to look at the masses' consensus opinion on movies, I would go to Letterboxd, okay? That's where people who are in the Kino review movies, like Chibli and Justin. True. And, well, I don't think Justin's into bad movies. I just, uh, he has interesting tastes. <laughs> yeah, dude. Megan Doubters stay losing for sure. Critics are terrible at reviewing comedies. Not if uh, you love uh, comedies that aren't funny. I will say, if you looked at um, the American Film Institute sight and sound poll, etc., etc., I bet the top 10 comedies of 2010 have a single laugh between them. I'm not saying they're bad movies. If you want to know what movie is, what comedy is funny, ask Josh. If you want to know what comedy is amusing, ask someone with glasses, okay? Josh wears glasses? Not all the time. What comedies are funny? Uh, Wedding Crashers. What comedy is amusing? The Royal Tenenbaums. What comedy is funny? Super bad. What comedy is amusing? The Banshees of Inishirin. What comedy is funny? Big Mama's House. What comedy is amusing? 1917. Is Cable Guy the most underrated Jim Carrey movie? Easy. Easy. I purchase that. I, I buy that prop bet without a doubt. What stream is funny? Squeaks. What stream is amusing? NL. Honestly, here's the thing. I'm not insulted because I think that's actually true. Like, when I watch Squeaks, I'm like, this guy is funny. Like, he's, he's got, like, setups and punchlines and recurring bits and the soundboard and Nadia. He subverts your expectations. Sometimes Nadia tries to rebel. When I, like, watch my own clips, I'm like, I get it. There's a, there's a, a, a slight exhalation from my nostril that is like, I understand what he's doing there. Ah, another Dennis Miller reference. What if Dennis Miller was a, was a, a fast, food, fast food reviewer in his car? I understand the premise of this joke. I can't, I get it. Thoughts on Hot Tub Time Machine? Um, it kind of made me, like, I, the movie is not that good, but Crispin Glover's in it too, which is, which is very nice. And also, no joke, that was, Hot Tub Time Machine was one of the, the first movies in my I Cry at All Movies arc now. I saw it in theaters in 2010, and I was like, this shit is, like, not that good. And then at the end, when Rob Corddry uses the hot tub time machine to go back in time and, like, fix his whole life, and Talking Heads Once in a Lifetime is playing, I'm like, Dude, you got me. You got me. He's fixing his life. That shit was, like, eight years before Black Panther. Ten minutes into the stream, he's already self-reporting. Excuse me. Crying at a movie is not self-reporting. You have just self-reported yourself for not being in touch with your own emotions, which in 2023 is very cringe. It's very cringe. That's toxic masculinity, my friend. You know what? I prescribe you. You must go to the movie theater and see Megan this weekend. The only horror movie in January history with 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. 
Today is January the 5th. This might not apply to everybody. I'm not trying to turn this into a bit. This is like real, actual. Some people are gonna be like, you just saved my life. Today would be a great day if you got nothing else going on to try to get a, a table for two reservation for Valentine's Day at a restaurant that would be appropriate for the occasion, okay? I say that as someone who thought that I was uh, smart and said, hey, it's January uh, 4th. I'll go look for a, for a reservation. And then like almost all of them are fucking uh, booked up already, you assholes. So I'm just saying that if maybe go 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 take a look yourself. Maybe you can maybe you can succeed where I failed. Where are you trying to eat? Well, it's just like honestly, this is not like a pro Vancouver or anti Vancouver bit. Vancouver is just very restaurant pilled, especially because we we got uh, the Michelin Guide this year. So like, it's just booked up like it's booked up like crazy. I'm always late on uh, on the reservations because I'm an idiot and I try to get them like six weeks early when I should be probably booking them like a year in advance or something. That being said, I will also say, oh, dude, listen, I don't want to get too Vancouver local here, but come on. You think I'm getting a reservation for Published on Main, recently selected as the number one restaurant in Canada? You think I'm getting a restaurant for two on Valentine's Day, Published on Main, six weeks out? Come on, this ain't... This ain't uh, American Psycho, uh, Patrick Bateman trying to go to Dorcia. Horny on Main. Now that would be a restaurant. There is a uh, there is a, a street in Vancouver called Hornby, but I don't believe that it intersects with Main. Otherwise, it would be great to open a business on Hornby and Main. Anyway, the other thing I will say is Valentine's Day is on like a Tuesday this year, so you know if maybe if the place you want to go is booked on Tuesday, maybe try like a Saturday, Sunday, and then pitch the idea of like, hey, on Tuesday, we'll have a nice home cooked meal, but on, uh, we'll have our actual Valentine's meal on Saturday. And nobody needs to know that it's just because Dorcia was booked up. <laughs> Did it work? Time will tell. But the other thing is, I honestly, I didn't make a reservation because I didn't want to be that guy that was like, that made a reservation and then had to cancel it later because with a child, sometimes things are a little unpredictable. So I'm like, I don't know. It's hard to, here's the thing. I could get a reservation at like 8 p.m., but that's pre-baby's bedtime. So what are we going to do? Get a babysitter and have the babysitter put the baby to bed? I can't imagine that working out too well. Secondarily, we could go out for dinner at 9.30, but that's actually like my bedtime. So if I uh, if I ate dinner at 9.30 and didn't get home till 11, it was like screw up my whole week, I think. So I got to figure it out. <laughs> I don't know. Got to talk about it. It makes it harder to be spontaneous, that's for sure. Have you thought about staying up late one night? Yeah, bro, I saw the Batman. Like at 8.40 start time or something. You can make fun of me for, for waking up or going to bed early if you want, but honestly, like, it's kind of sick. How many hours of sleep do you average? Eight. And listen. I know you're going to say that it's like, whoa, lucky I average four. I don't mean to be like the world's biggest hater, but it's like... It's because I don't, like, I sacrifice my leisure time in order to have, in order to, you know, leverage it for sleep. Yeah, like, honestly, I think it's, you know, and again, it changes at, like, different phases. Oh, I'm out of here. Uh, of your life, for sure, don't get me wrong. But, like, right now, nothing feels like I, if, if the choice was, like, play an hour of a video game and get seven hours of sleep, I found. Or get eight hours of sleep. I'm choosing eight hours of sleep every single day. Go ahead. Get, get, get ready for the QTE. <laughs> I thought I would have a QTE.
You know I love you, NL, but Tarkov just wiped. First off, I would say pun intended. Secondly, I would say... Let's serve five sharks. Um, with, I'm, I'm, you, you can do whatever you want to do with your life, okay? All I want to say is you can't um, just put me on the second monitor while you're in your seven minute uh, customs queue. Or I guess that's true. You need at least three monitors to play Tarkov and watch something else because your second monitor has to be uh, the map on the wiki because they don't include a map in the game because in real life maps don't exist and they want to be as realistic as possible. Okay, I'm ready. Let's Let's open this up here. Plus two, plus two, plus two. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, dude. I didn't look at that at all. Um, it's it's uh, that hospital game. Trauma hospital. Among Us. Among Us. I saw Dave. He was at the submarine door, and honestly, it looked like he was using the gas cutter, but he might have just been marinating me. Good! Why does three eggs feel like so much more than two eggs? Honestly, I think people are going to condescend to you. They're going to say something like, um, because it's 50% more. But I think there's some truth to that. Like, two eggs feels like barely enough, and three eggs is like, whoa, what's with all the eggs? I think it's that, like, when you cook two eggs, you lose a little bit to breakage. Like, probably like a quarter of one egg ends up just, you know, being stuck to the, the circumference of the pan. So with three eggs, you lose a quarter of one egg, but then you still got 2.75 eggs. So, you know, that versus 1.75. I think it's a, it makes a, a disproportionate difference, I think. Navy SEAL takes massive unforced error. Very true to form. Excuse me, I thought that Navy SEALs were like the... Isn't that like the Jason Bourne branch of the U.S. military? Don't you have to be able to do like 20 push-ups to qualify for that? My ass could not do that. <laughs> if you um, sign up for the US military and then you like are like psych, do they kill you or throw you in jail or just make you like pay back the signing bonus. What happens? Because I mean, it must happen all the time, right? Like you're signing up 18 year olds. There must be situations where, because like they're, they're kids basically. They don't know what they're doing. They sign up and then they jog for like two days and they're like, this shit is not for me. They're like, my ass is gonna learn how to do like IT or something like that. Because, like, in war, they'd probably be, like, pretty mad. Don't quote me on that one. Because they'd be like, what the heck? We gave you, like, a free flight. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. It's, it's getting a little disrespectful, but... <laughs> the penalty for desertion is that your boss gets pretty mad. I mean, it must happen, like, a lot, right? At least, like, in basic training, it must happen all the time. You gotta imagine, probably, like, 1 in 20 kids, like, washes out, right? Way more? My ass would desert so fast. I say this as an indictment of myself, rather than as, uh... Like, a positive thing. But I think my ass would, like, thrive in the military. And I think it's worth exploring what's wrong with me that, that leads me to say that. I don't feel comfortable unless I'm being condescended to. I, I live a life of rigorous structure as is. Plus, I'm already bald. True. 
I would probably be the guy who's like not the drill sergeant, but like stands next to the drill sergeant and goes like, Yeah, maggots! Drop and give him 20! And then like all the other recruits would like resent me. I would see like all the other recruits, they'd be having like one Mike's Hard Lemonade in the barracks and I'd be like, I gotta tell sergeant about this! And then they would like grab me and restrain me and like kill me or something. I don't know, would love to know your thoughts on this. Something like that. <laughs> this is not a real thing? What do you mean it's not a real- there's not like a- There's no flavor Flav to the drill sergeant's Chuck D? He doesn't need a hype man? Well, you'd think, like, their their throat would get sore after all that yelling every once in a while just to be able to take a break and have somebody be like, Yeah! You swine! <laughs> Did he stutter? He said drop and give him 20! Anyone else starting to nod off to NL's content? Listen, I know just because I haven't replied to your earlier messages, you think I didn't read them? I saw you type if there was any chance I was going back to Overwatch, okay? You probably typed it eight times in chat. Now listen, it's not my fault that we got a nice meditative game like Dave the Diver that can be enjoyed by normal people, but you're so used to every single pixel on the screen lighting up and... and oh, Symmetra, we got to... Symmetra, push the point. I'm using, I require more Vespian gas. Push the tiny car. Okay, like not, not everybody's brain requires that level of saturation of, of stimulus at every given moment in order to stay awake, okay? This is, we're just swimming, we're catching fish, we're bringing them back and we're cooking them. It's, it's nice, it feels... I'm in the flow state. You should play this cool roguelike card game called FIFA Ultimate Team. I think if I wasn't a streamer, my ass would probably play a lot of Ultimate Team. So I, I thank uh, streaming for saving me from that sorry fate. You'd still be stuck on Dota? No, I, might, I think I might be one of those guys who just like um, gets Forza Horizon 6 on Game Pass. And then like just plays that for like three years. We've all got one guy like that in our lives. He's probably killing it, like, uh, in, in other avenues of, of his life. I did play uh, NHL Ultimate Team for, like, I don't know, maybe three months. I spent no money on it, except, and this is a legitimate except, he's going to sleep. Um, except for the pre-order bonus cards. And then I reached a point where I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, I remember, like, I was, like, committed to not spending any money on the game. And then they would have, like, these monthly, uh, like, free, pretty decent cards you could get. Like, I remember you could get a Ray Ferraro. He was a 91 overall center with great speed. Very important in, in today's NHL, right? I played like two hours a day of doing the daily quests, farming the AI in order to earn him. And then when I got him, I was like, this is like 60 hours of work. <laughs> well, not work, but 60 hours at least. To like, save $10 and feel good about not spending $10. And I think some people, that's their breaking point where they go, I'm just going to put the $10 in. For me, I was like, I had lost all respect for myself. So instead, I said, I'm not playing this shit. It's just a fucking, like, economic treadmill. I just quit. I mean, you're not wrong. I could have paid the 10 bucks, but, like, then where does it end? Then you're paying, you know, a million dollars, and you're, oh, I need oxygen. I need oxygen. I'm going to die. I am dead. I'm, there's no escape for me, unless this has O2. Nope. All right, that was bad. I would call this a bad performance. Let me die like a... Like a dog in the caves. <laughs> I don't know why a dog would die in the caves, but... Hang on! Ooh! My horny ass will never drown! <laughs> So I think we were doing fine on the kitchen with James and, and Boncho, but I think we could use a, another server just to run food. They don't even need the uh, 
they don't even need the the drink serving yet. And can I ask you a question? What is appeal? <laughs> what what is procure and what is appeal? You know what it is? Is this like when I get offended when people call the Cactus Club a so-called restaurant because they only hire young women to be servers between the ages of like 18 and 25 even though that's illegal but i like the cactus club because it's just a nice place to take people for like a solid meal when you have picky eaters in your group and honestly like the tuna stack and is pretty good and the lettuce wraps are good too and they got like some of the best yam fries in the city i'm not saying it's a top tier restaurant i'm just saying if you're like if you happen to be like out in a place that has a cactus club and you got four people in your party and one of them eats a sauce that does they, they, they don't eat any sauce that's based on mayonnaise then it's a good place to go i hope your wife ain't in the chat brother who do you think is going coming with me to cactus club <laughs> Okay, hold on. What should we research? My horny ass could never work at the Cheesecake Factory? What are you talking about? It doesn't even make any sense. I think my ass could never work at the Cheesecake Factory just because there's too many damn tables. I think even as staff, I would get lost inside of the restaurant. All right, dolphins. Because you are cute and intelligent fish, you're free. Time to go kill some of your... Some of your ocean brethren. They're not fish, they're mammals. Okay, they're, they, they're quite fish-like um, for a mammal. But, you know, I'm... We don't need to get into the weeds too much on this. Possibly the most fish-like mammal of, of all the mammals. Why are you so concerned about... Uh, just one second here, one second. Why are you so concerned about whether or not the animals um, are drinking dolphin titty milk. You know, that seems like it's more like a it's personal business. I'm not really worried about that. I'm more just worried about like the way that they look and like the way that they move through the world and they move through the world um, like a fish. So I'm going to call them a fish, okay? If you got a problem with that, you got a problem with me. Are whales fish? In, in my head, yes, whales are fish. I'm not suggesting that they belong to, they, they, that they don't belong to the order Mammalia. I'm simply saying, I, I choose, and, and maybe I'm crazy for this one, I choose to organize animals in my head, uh, not by their Linnaean binomial nomenclature, but rather by how they look and how they move. So if, if, I, uh, if, if a whale was coming to eat me, and I said, watch out, there's a big fish down there. And your ass said, uh, actually, it's a big mammal. You don't want to know how much adrenaline would kick into my body to ensure that it ate you instead of me. I would give every last bit of ATP in each of the mitochondria of each of my billions of cells in order to make sure that it was you who perished instead of me. Are bats birds? No, because they're nocturnal. It's a trick question. And, and whoops, wrong button. Honestly, I, I don't appreciate you trying to trap me in, in linguistic pitfalls like that. <coughs> it's gotcha journalism. Are owls not birds? Okay, you got me on that one. I would say my personal opinion, owls are birds. But I can't reconcile that. But it's just, wait, you know, here's the thing. You think like, oh, there's, that's a contradiction in your logic? Okay. Well, here's a contradiction for you. Light behaves as both a particle and a wave. That doesn't mean that the science was wrong. It just means, you know, it's, it's not at the level it needs to be at yet. Are jellyfish fish? You know, that's a weird one for me. Because I, I, I've always thought of jellyfish, they're kind of more like bugs. They're like an aquatic insect. I don't care that they don't have six legs. That's another one that, that burns me up. I, re I get really annoyed by armchair careless Linnaeus, man. Like, I recognize that spiders aren't insects, but they live with the bugs. So just because they got two extra legs and actually they're... Uh, 
they're an arachnid instead of an arthropod? Like, I literally don't care. They're a bug. You heard it here first. Spiders, officially bugs. Are octopuses bugs? No, octopuses are, they're their own thing. I don't really know what the, I'm still trying to reconcile where octopuses fit into the whole situation. Are scorpions bugs? Absolutely. Scorpions confirmed bugs. What are rats? Rats are mammals because they have fur. Are penguins fish? No, penguins are birds. D left W, okay. That one's a gimme. They don't fly though? Um, they could, I think, if they, if they had a little more get up and go. Are seals fish? No, because they're cute. Seals are definitely mammals because they're cute. How long is this bit going to go on for? I don't know. Why don't you ask the like 8,000 people asking me every animal under the sun? But you said dolphins are fish? I don't consider dolphins to be as cute as a seal. Sharks are fish? Yeah, I would plus two that take for sure. Are snails bugs? I would say they'd, they're they more bug than, than mammal. That's for sure. I mean, I recognize, again, I, it's, I'm not saying that evolutionarily speaking, they're closer related to bugs than they are to, you know, other lizards or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what a snail actually is. <laughs> Worms, I guess, is it's an annelid, maybe, but uh, or I don't know, is it a um, what what are they called the the like clams? It's a mollusk, yeah. I'm mostly just listen. If you see a clam in your garden, you're not like, oh, there's a bug here. If you see a snail in your garden, you're like, what the hell? What is this bug doing here? No, I would say there's a bug in the garden. And then if someone was like, actually, that's a a mollusk, not a bug, then I would say, okay, you deal with it. You just earned yourself bug privileges. Hey, look at this mollusk I just found. Me, fresh out of ninth grade uh, biology. Um, actually, mom, it's a mollusk. Just in case you're ever on like Jeopardy sometime. I just like, I mean, the the capstone for this for me is the people who like correct you on like that's not a, a an insect, that's a spider. To me, they're cut from the same cloth as the people who, who like, correct your grammar for no reason. And then they have the audacity to say things like, Oh, sorry, I'm just correcting you so nobody corrects you in the future. That, for me, is like... I, I find it self-serving and unnecessary. Let's put it that way. Minus two. Uh, actually, you can't start a sentence with a number. Winston Churchill famously said that. So if you could please rework that and put it into a full sentence instead of a sentence fragment. I only respond to sentence, uh, full sentences. I don't respond to sentence fragments. Is this a friendly creature? I'm gonna guess no. Even though he looks cute. He must be a mammal. Big Krabby? It affected him none. He's literally just saying, like, I, I, I can't do anything to this guy. He's, he's unstoppable. Take a shot. Take a shot. Maybe when he raises his crab claws. <laughs> That's one big bug. Listen, I don't know why crabs are different. They just are, okay? What are crabs? Crabs are crabs. They're part of the genus Crabia, along with lobsters. And maybe like crayfish, but I'm kind of undecided on them. If anything, you're not wrong. They're kind of like closest to maybe like a spider. What about shrimp? I think like shrimp and seahorses are all in their own uh, category. Weird dudes. Again, I'm not trying to rework the, the world of zoology. I am simply saying I, I categorize animals based on, you know, how I would react if I saw them in vivo, rather than how I would react, um, you know, if I saw them, like, in a lab. In vitro? No, I don't think I'll be seeing them in vitro, because I'm not a, a, a seahorse fertility doctor. What are humans? We're, we're at the top of the food chain, that's the only thing that matters. 
What are humans? Don't worry about it. I'll worry about it that when we're number two on the food chain. Then I'll worry about what we are. When we start getting eaten by, by fish or bugs. Why are you being so incredibly based today? Because I find that I've, I've decided to finally be honest. And my honest opinions are very agreeable. It's mostly my lying opinions that are insane. Like, I'm just going to say it. As long as we're telling the truth, I don't think that little kids should work in mines. Maybe they could be part of the white collar work group. They could be in the office. I mean, honestly, like, how old do you have to be to, like, check your email inbox and then, like, reply and say, like, let me run this up the flagpole and get back to you? What? You could probably start doing that shit when you're, like, six years old. I need oxygen. I need to upgrade my harpoon gun. Not quite a fork. Not quite a spoon, but something in between. A fapoon. Find a microphone, find the Sea People Stone tablet. I'm on my way. It's Britney, bitch. I was thinking today, what do you think is the best bitch ever uttered in media? I've got three possible options, okay? It's Britney, bitch. And then we'll add a, a second. Um, it's Britney, bitch by Michael Scott. It's Britney, bitch. When he's actually listening to Kelly Clarkson. I can't remember who it is, but it's not, it's not Britney. Let's put it that way. Um... Key and Peel. I said, bitch. Or Jesse Pinkman, science bitch. What do you think uh, out of those is the all time best bitch in media? I'm the, I'm the juggernaut, juggernaut bitch. bitch. Okay, I think that loses in the quarterfinals to, on, 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 in my personal bracket. I lived bitch. Now that very true. I lived, bitch, is definitely a good one. The price, price is, is wrong, wrong bitch. bitch. I'm rich, bitch. You know what? There's been a lot of great um, uttered bitches in media, for sure. Get away, Get away from, from her, you bitch. bitch. Top Chef Season 1, I'm not your bitch, bitch. Every time, I'm not your bitch, bitch. I don't know that one. I mean, I think it's it's we're ripe for a tier list. Let's put it that way. You've never worked a blue collar job? Uh, excuse me, I, I worked as a mover for one day. That's like a no collar job. Being a husband and a father is a blue collar job. Like it's no joke. Uh, I mean, it is. I think being like a father to a teenager is a white collar job because mostly you're like, hey, do this. Hey, don't do that. Hey, you're on academic probation. Hey, me, when I was a kid and I did something wrong, go to your room. Me to my kids in 2029 when they do something wrong, you're not allowed to go into your room. But I will say, my left arm from carrying our toddler around everywhere is getting freaking yoked, dude. I'm, I'm starting to look like uh, like abomination for real. I'm starting to get the, the Hellboy drip. I'm starting to get Baker's forearms. And you know what's crazy is that it seems, I don't know if other dads are in this, or other parents, I should say, are in the same boat, but like, sometimes like my left arm will hurt from carrying her for so long, and I'm like, why don't I just put her in the right arm? But I, my brain can't figure it out. It's like trying to write, like you have a primary hand, it's like trying to write with your other hand. Like if I put her in, on my right side, I, I wouldn't know how to hold her right. It's weird. You should try a blue collar job just to do it. I think you'd like it. Listen, I actually like, I agree with you and not just because it's a little flattering to find like nobility in hard work, but I actually like, there's, I don't want to, stop fucking talking to me. I don't want to do a job that is like, I'm not naive enough to think that I would be like, why are all the, why are the movers complaining so much? All you do is pick up heavy shit all day for 14 hours a day, place it where somebody else who's drinking a smoothie tells you to place it and then, you know, do it. And then you pick it up in the one place, you load it onto a truck and then you offload it and then you would like it. But I think like a, my ideal job and, and weirdly streaming is like this is basically just a repetition of like a small basic task over and over. 
Now, I, I, there's jobs that would be like that, but also bad. Like, I don't want to like, you know, spread asphalt in the hot California sun or something like that. But I could definitely see myself being like, uh, like I, look, I'm not good with my hands, so this really narrows it down. But like, I could see myself being the kind of guy, if I was good with my hands, that like I'm the last step on like the frozen dumpling assembly line, and my whole job every day is just going like this. As long as, as, long as I could wear headphones, and have like a podcast on, I think I could find some contentment in that. Maybe not fulfillment, but I think I could find some contentment. Isn't that brain rot? Yeah, but like in a, you know, like the same kind of brain rot you get from having like two pints of, of an IPA. Like, you know, good brain rot. <laughs> I stocked shelves overnight for six months. The podcast did not help. I honestly think I could be kind of a good cashier. I don't know about shelf stalker. I think I could be... A I was having a great time cleaning my fridge. Mind you, that was literally for like 90 minutes maximum. But you hate people though? Yeah, but like people my age, you know, they don't want to talk to the cashier either. It's only the, like the boomers and they're like increasingly short supply. It's a great time to, to buy low on the cashier industry. The, and I don't know, this is a privileged take. But I was gonna say, from my limited experience, the worst thing about office work was just being bored and having nothing to do. Like at least having something to do. It, it's different if you have your own office and there's no productivity software monitoring you, because then if you got nothing to do, you can just fuck off. But like, if you're in an office and you're like being supervised but there's nothing to do, so you have to spend like more effort pretending that you're doing something and hiding that you're fucking off. Like that's what is draining and makes every day that's eight hours long feel like it's 12 hours long. But that's like, to, to be actually busy instead of filling like a third or more of your day with fake work, that there's some, there's nobility in that, I think. So by the way, I know I said we were gonna have some gaming here, but I had to, now that Kate's in chat, Kate, did you see that Megan has a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes? So are we going Thursday at midnight? Or, or are we gonna like... <laughs> I know the baby's not in daycare tomorrow. Would you, would, is it okay? It's rated R probably, maybe PG-13, are we okay? <laughs> Can we take her to the movie? What if we t took her to the movie, but we dressed her as Megan and told her to be quiet? People might think that she's, like, just a prop. You know how there's a play area for kids in Ikea? Okay, I'm listening. They should do that at the movie th theater. Actually, incredible idea. Kate, one of the all-time greatest ideas you've ever had, without a doubt. I would go, s well, we would go see so many more movies. Because here's the thing, it's really hard for Kate and I to see a movie right now. Which is, like, it's not that big of a deal. But, like, usually we have to wait till she, like, goes to bed. Not Kate. We have to wait till the baby goes to bed. And then we, like, go see a movie at 9 p.m., which is crazy because we don't get out till, like, 11.15. And then maybe we don't get home till, like, almost midnight. And then we got to wake up at, like, 6.30 a.m. the next day. There's not a lot of movies that are worth that kind of investment. We're not even talking about, like, the financial stuff. But, like, to instead be able to see a movie at, like, 2 p.m. and just have our daughter be in, like, a McDonald's play place that's supervised by a licensed uh, daycare provider would go, it would go crazy. We have that at ours. How much would you pay for that? I mean, I would, I would pay what we would have paid to the babysitter, probably. <laughs> just for the convenience of it. Plus, she'd be having a great time. You know, like with the babysitter, the babysitter is mostly just there to make sure like she's not gonna, you know, turn the oven on accidentally or something like that. But if she was having fun in like a soft play place, soft play place or something like that. They used to have that at the mall too. When I was growing up, my parents used to drop me off at this like Jimboree thing in the mall and then go shop for like an hour and a half. Anyway, <laughs> would love to know your thoughts. I think it's a great idea. I would definitely pay minimum, minimum $20, like surcharge, for a, a movie theater that had a daycare where you could put your kid in there for like two hours. 
and they would have a great time. I don't think I'm going to bake a sourdough anytime soon because I, I honestly, the sourdough that I get from the grocery store is, is delicious enough and I really can't beat the time investment required. But I do think I might become one of those psychos that like on Sundays air fries like five sweet potatoes and then microwaves one of them for lunch every day. I could see myself becoming a sweet potato psycho. You'll turn orange from one sweet potato a day. I don't think people were eating that. It's like a staple back in the in the caveman days. I think anybody was like, oh, I don't like sweet potatoes. They're too sweet. Can I just get a regular potato? People would look at you and be like, what the hell is a regular potato? You know what would be a great um, battle? We should, and, and it wouldn't offend anybody. We should have a battle of old world foods versus new world foods. What... And this is, like, I pre presented, if possible, stripped of, obviously, all the problematic nature of colonialism. What world do you think wins? Because, like, the New World's got some crazy stuff. Corn, tomatoes, potatoes. But then the Old World's got some, got some bangers, too, man. I'm sure. I can't think of them right now, but I'm sure they got it done. <laughs> It's not even close. It's the new world. I mean, the old world's got rice. That's a, that's a top tier. That's a top tier staple. Cattle. That's a... Dude, cattle's a huge one. Onions. Wheat. Wheat is crazy. I don't know. I'd have to think about it, man. I mean, it's a tough one. Old world has pizza. What are you talking about? Yeah, pizza back then. Pizza was invented in New York City in 1951. By John Pizza. Real and true. Dude, it, they, Italy must have felt so stupid when the tomato existed. Or when they, found, when they found out tomatoes existed. They were like, we've been making the pizza... With, uh, I don't even know what they've been using. We've been making a pizza with tomato on pizza that'll never work. Pizza's made with eggplant. It, we use a, you said tzatziki. We use tzatziki. I get that it's Greek. I'm just trying to make it work, okay? I make it a pizza. I don't pay it a taxes. Anyway. Fruit on a pizza. You can't put a, a tomato on a pizza. Is Italian the only safe accent? Um, no. You can definitely still do Southern US, but I think we're getting close to the point where that's going to become problematic. And you can definitely do New York and British, Australian, New Zealand, and Canadian. Irish? I don't know. I do Scottish, but people tell me I shouldn't. Maybe that's just because it's bad, though. Midwestern's still on the table for sure. Oh, dude, Midwestern never left. Hey, I'm just, I'm just checking in. Yeah, yeah, you too. I'm just checking in on the status of my Caesar salad, because it's been about, uh, it's been about 20, 20 minutes since I ordered my Caesar salad. I'm just wondering if you're getting the recipe. Um, um, if you're if you're digging up, are you? Did you go on a flight to Rome and dig up um, Julius himself to get the recipe? Because I could tell you, it's just romaine lettuce, a ranch, and some garlic croutons. Incredible bit. Ranch, ranch. The joke is that in the Midwest they have uh, bad taste. Minus two, minus two, minus two. You've never eaten a garbage plate. You've never eaten a scrapple. You've never eaten. Frito, a walking Frito's taco out of an aluminum potato chip. Shut the fuck up! Ranch is popular in the south, though. Ranch is popular everywhere, dude, because it tastes fucking delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's disgusting. I wish that it wasn't disgusting, but still tasted amazing. But that shit is, like, real tasty. <laughs> Garbage plate is from Rochester, not the Midwest. Oh, come on, Rochester. You're like the Midwest of New York. Like, not geographically, but <laughs> culturally speaking. Okay, I'm, I'm digging myself a hole here. 
You're gonna tell me, like, I know Buffalo is New York, but, like, you're gonna tell me Buffalo isn't the Midwest. Eating weird foods called beef on weck. My horny ass could never live in Buffalo. So, <laughs> so true. It's in many ways, probably so true. Yeah, I'm, like, pro-ranch. Like I said, I, I wish it wasn't as delicious as it obviously is. As far as salad dressings go, I would rather dip something into ranch than put ranch on a salad. But I, I wouldn't be too picky about either, quite frankly. But like a celery stick dipped in ranch goes pretty hard. Also, like, and maybe we're getting into like, uh, too disgusting here. But like ranch flavored snacks, like the veggie straws. Veggie straws are pretty decent, but a veggie straw with ranch. Ooh. There's no Korean restaurants where I live, but I still want to try it. What dish is simple, but also authentic? This might be, people might want to kill me for this take. If you've never really eaten Korean food, I don't think you should cook it at home. I don't think you're going to get, there's, there's too many, like if you've, if you've had it before, then, then I think maybe I'd go back on this, but there's too many like specialized ingredients that, that really help out the flavor. Like, I don't think if, if, if you look at like bibimbap and you're like, oh, it's just like julienne vegetables and like cooked ground beef and some spicy sauce, like in a bowl mixed together. I mean, you got to get some chamgi room. You got to get, you got to, you got to, you can't just julienne whatever vegetables you, you want. You know, you got to get the burdock. You got to get the sea tangle. You got to get, it's. It's, you don't want to be making the gamjatang without having the weird grains of flavor that are on top of the gamjatang. And you can't just use any hot sauce. It, it, like, for it to be Korean food, it has to be gochujang. Or maybe, like, depending on what you're eating, it could be, like, cho gochujang. But, like, even that's, like, a little... Excuse me, don't zap me. Yeah, like, to, to make Korean food at home, and, like, Kate does it all the time. But we make a trip to, like, H Mart or, or Hanam Supermarket, and then we buy shit that I've never seen before. Oligosaccharide syrup. What Korean dish should I eat as a picky eater? I mean, honestly, it's dealer's choice. Korean barbecue would be, like, the easiest answer of all time. Like, it's, it's just grilled meat and, and some rice. And then, you know, hey, I'm not a picky eater. May, again, maybe people will want to kill me for this take. I'm not a picky eater, but I still don't eat most of the Korean side dishes. I love, everybody loves kimchi, okay? I love kimchi, of course. And I like the potato, but I'm not that into the bean sprouts. I'm not that into the, uh, the, the beans themselves. I'm not that into the... Uh, listen, I'll eat, I'll eat many varieties of pickled radish, okay? Oh, I love a cucumber kimchi. Maybe I do like most of them. <laughs> I don't like... Uh, is it Don Muji? I think I just OD'd on Don Muji when I lived in Korea. I'm Korean, Ryan is just making up words. No, they, this is slander. They, that person may be Korean, but they're trying to... They're gaslighting me. These are real words. Chomgi room, I said just to flex that I knew what it was, okay? It's just sesame oil. I'm just the guy. What about Doc Ball? I don't know. I felt like a, a hater because Justin was talking in our Discord. He was like, I, I really want to try Doc Ball one of these days. I was watching like a Korean street food video and it looked delicious. And then Rob was like, yeah, it looks so good. As someone who's eaten it, I was like, man. You guys are literally, you're, you're missing out on nothing. Like, Doc Ball is just, all it, the only flavor is like spicy. Doc Ball is it's chicken feet. It's just like an incredibly spicy sauce. And then like, I don't even know how, it's, it's kind of like eating chicken skin. Now, if you're talking about, um, if you're talking about weird parts of the chicken, Chicken gizzard, chicken hearts go crazy. But but chicken feet, I don't, honestly, I don't think you're missing out on much. Cartilage too. Like there's that, that chain, that izakaya chain in Japan. 
where like I don't know maybe with inflation it's different but like when when Kate and I would go there like everything on the menu was like 180 yen or something like that that's where I ate all the gross parts of the of the chicken and not all of them were gross <laughs> you ever had chok ball chok ball is is pig feet I have had it I and I also hate that I told you I'm not a foot guy I don't even know how to describe the... Dude, there's a lot of Korean food, I'll just be honest with you, I just don't like. I don't like jokbal, and I also don't like sundae, which is like Korean blood sausage. It's very popular. I also don't like makjang or gopjang, which are like different parts of pig intestines. Uh, then they just, they smell like shit and taste like gasoline to me, for whatever reason. I don't like tteokbokki. I love Korean food, but there are. They, I think the reason I don't like I I like Korean food is because I've had a lot of it, but I've had enough of it to also know what I don't like. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Like I don't like tteokbokki. I don't like um, I don't like naengmyeon. I like almost. I, well, I don't. I hate bude jjigae. Oh, if you're not familiar, okay, bude jjigae is like it's called Korean army stew. The supposed origin of it is that, like, it's basically just a stew of whatever you have on hand, but also they used rations from the American army during the Korean War. So it has uh, spam or cut up hot dogs in it, and also, like, baked beans. I fucking hate it. Like, that's definitely one of it, it's a very popular food. It's one of the few foods that I think I would actually rather starve. And I know that makes me... It's just a weird one. It makes me... I feel like a baby when I'm saying it, but like... I don't, I don't really like baked beans. The Korean sausage is also like... They, they don't... They didn't inherit like the European sausage culture. They inherited the American sausage culture. With no disrespect to America, okay? But like, rather than be into like bratwurst and stuff like that, they the, the sausages in Korea are like predominantly completely uniform, like pink cylinders that are like, or Vienna sausages and stuff like that. I know that America has a, a diverse sausage culture. I'm just saying like, it, they're, that's not what they're eating. But I like most uh, Korean food. I like all the dup bops, all the bokum bops. I like most of the soups. I like all the, the chungles. I like, uh, I mean, Korean barbecue, of course. Bibimbap, yeah. Although I would honestly, I would always prefer a dolsa bibimbap to a regular bibimbap. But I, maybe that makes, maybe that makes me a North American, which is true. You like jajangmyeon? I, I like it okay. Kate really likes jajangmyeon. Bosam. Well, something's okay. It's it's not my favorite. It's like, I don't know. I, I listen. I I like Sam. In general, I don't really like Bosam though. Japche. I'm not that. Listen. Here's my 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 Japche story. Is that like one of the first times I went to Kate's house for dinner? Her mom made Japche, and just to be polite. <laughs> I, it's, it was good, don't get me wrong, but just to be polite, I was like, oh, I love this japche. This is delicious. And then for like five years after that, uh, after that, every time I visited, they would make me japche. And they would always tell me like, oh, like it's really hard to make japche. Like it takes a lot of time, but because you love it so much, like we always make it for you. And I had to tell Kate to tell her mom that like, actually, I don't like japche that much. Sorry. I fully accept that I'm the, the asshole in that situation, by the way. Same thing happened with my girlfriend's mom's chili. It's the thing, like, what are you supposed to say, right? Like, it, it was fine, don't get me wrong. It wasn't, like, unpleasant to eat, but if I'd known that being overly praising was gonna mean that I was gonna eat it, like, you know, once every three months for the next five years, I would have said, like, Oh, it's good. I wouldn't have said like, oh, this is, this is the best job Che I've ever had in my life.
You ever been to Santiago, Chile? Twice last year. What is job chase? It's it's not that serious, honestly. Like it's it's glass noodles and then like um like thinly sliced red peppers and other vegetables, maybe like some spinach in there. It's not glass noodles. Well, it's it's dangmyeon, right? Isn't that glass noodles? They are clear. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not an extreme noodle head. Night salt. Yes, they are called glass noodles. Okay, one guy, how do you feel right now? I work at the Taco Bell of Korean food. We just call them sweet potato noodles. What's the Taco Bell of Korean food? It seems crazy that there's no like Korean food has not been um Franchised in that way. At least not, I mean, I mean, in Korea, obviously, there's Korean food chains, but we don't really have Korean food chains in, in Canada, at least. You need two? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Deji is one? No, okay, so we were at North Road Plaza, right? Going to Hanam. Sorry, this is way too, like, Burnaby pilled. But, um,. There's a Dweji there. Dweji is famous for selling like enormous pork cutlets. Like if you order from Dweji, it's like $8. They give you two enormous uh, like katsu that you can get it with pork, you can get it with chicken, whatever. Also like macaroni salad, also kimchi, also a staggering like a pound of rice. Also like, like it's, it's so much food that it's almost disgusting. And we went to North Road Plaza. We found out that that Dweji had, had gone out of business. It had been there for like 20 years. Kate said, how did it go out of business? I said, maybe they should stop selling, you know, $30 worth of food for $7. I felt bad, like, as soon as I said it. But also, I was like, there's no... Even, like, while ordering from it, I was like, this shit cannot be profitable. Like, it simply doesn't make sense. How do you feel about sundubu? It's a soft tofu soup. I am, uh, I would say, mildly positive. I'm mildly for it. It's not my favorite Korean soup. I mean, I go crazy for some gamjitang. We had gamjitang for dinner last night. Might even have it for dinner again tonight. Because the, the pot was so big. But samgyeopsal? Yeah, I mean, it, it, listen, of course I like samgyeopsal. It's just... It's like glorified bacon. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Mm. Can I tell you a sad short story? Drank my last can of sparkling water yesterday. Went to the grocery store to get my wife some uh, dumpling wrappers. May have gotten some spicy peanuts while I was there myself. Who's to say? Get back. Hmm, I feel like I'm forgetting something. No sparkling water. My reaction went no sparkling water. I mean, I can still... It's not like I'm dying of thirst. Like, I can still drink regular water, but, like, I could go for some some sparkling, man. What brand do you get? Listen, I'm a bubbly guy. I've tried them all. Let me explain why I'm a bubbly guy. I think it's roughly the same quality as LaCroix. But LaCroix, tend, at least here, tends to be more expensive than bubbly. Simply by virtue of the fact that LaCroix comes in 8 packs and bubbly comes in 12 packs. I have tried AHA. Which I believe, one of them is like the Coke brand and one of them is the Pepsi brand. Aha's flavor, I thought, was probably superior to Bubbly's. But after drinking one can of it, I got horrendous heartburn and I'm not willing to re-up. I don't know if it's simply like too carbonated for my sternum or something like that. But it just, for whatever reason, it, it didn't agree with me. I have tried the Western Family which is like a kind of a, a generic brand here. I tried a, uh, a Western Family sparkling water because it was even cheaper than the bubbly. And it, uh, it just, the taste was so much worse that I was like, no, I'm willing to pay a little bit extra. And that's basically all we got here. There, it, to be fair, there is, um, well, uh, Lore Masters, what was the, the the sparkling water that's local that I drank for a while? Sparkmouth, yes. Sp I, I used to drink some Sparkmouth, but they only stock it 
here at the Whole Foods. I haven't been to the Whole Foods in a while because it's the most expensive store on the planet. Also, can I tell you, I don't want to, uh, listen, put a brand on blast. I know they're not a local brand. I have been drinking stock cold brew coffee, S-T-O-K, for like two years, you know? Every time I'm at the grocery store, I'm like, do I need cold brew? Sure, I'll get some stock, okay? Didn't really think about it. It became part of my uh, my daily routine, or like, I guess weekly routine to be fair. Went to the grocery store yesterday, compared prices. The, I think that the, so apparently it's Stoke, my mistake. Stoke was a dollar thirty more expensive than the Starbucks brand for the same size of container. And I said, have you not looked at the economy lately, Stoke? I understand you probably have higher unit costs and like different economies of scale versus versus Starbucks. They The price changed my habit. I debased myself. I bought the Starbucks instead of the Stoke because I was just like, I'm not, listen, it's not a dollar 30 because it's, I'm buying like two of them a week. So we're talking, it's like a hundred dollar a year savings. Now, if you wanted to save money, you could just make your own cold brew at home. But I'm just saying, you know, this, that was a frictionless, a relatively frictionless change. So I'm, it's Stoke. Listen, you can get me Stoke. You can get me back, but you got to. You got to compete with them on price just a little bit, okay? Yes, I know cold brew is easy to... I mean, we do this... We don't have to do this every time. Yes, cold brew is easy to make. Why do I buy cold brew at the grocery store rather than buy cold brew or buy coffee, grind it myself, and put it in my cold brew kit at home? Because buying it at the store takes a millisecond, and making it at home takes five minutes. So it's literally like, even though it's easy to make cold brew at home, and it's cheaper probably by like half... It's a billion times more time investment. I look at it proportionally. I don't look at it as a, as a scalar value. Plus, that is true. The other thing is, sometimes you're like, you only notice that you're out of cold brew when you open your fridge in the morning. And that's a real problem. Because it takes 12 hours to make. Internet's been kind of bad lately, huh? I know every time I say that, like the internet used to be better. People call me a boomer, which is, like, fair to an extent. But there is also some... You're ignoring the possibility that some things used to be better. At least don't bunker me. I'll take that. I'm not saying the internet necessarily used to be better, but I think there are some things that used to be better. Like, for example, streaming media companies used to be better. Back when it was just Netflix and there was no competition. That's one I think most of us could agree on. So obviously there are some things that used to be better. We can't just say that nothing ever used to be better. It's one of the craziest shots I've ever hit. I hope that, that Twitch was not down for that because that was one of the most insane shots of all time. Thank you. You're welcome. Did, Chad, did you not see the shots? It was actually... I, you're not going to believe this. And I probably wouldn't either. But I actually, for the first time in my golfing career, I hit a, a curved shot with backspin around a tree for an insane approach. I do think, I mean, I'm trying to think of some things that used to be better. I de like, streaming media definitely used to be better. I think that one is like a gimme. I mean, th this is maybe the most boomer take of all time, but I do think that popular music used to be better. It's probably better now than it was in my teenage years because it was like pure garbage but i think it's definitely worse than it was in like you know like the late 60s you didn't lose your channel points they're still connected to the database they just you know it's just they might have to restore from a backup or something it's okay don't even worry about it just watch this drive We go crazy for this. 
they have no backups? Bro, then they, the whole source code leaked like a year and a half ago. They could just remake it. I like it. I like it. Just stop. Stop it right there. Roll it back a little. A beautiful approach. Nice approach. It's back. It's back. Hello, gamers. Ooh. Sorry, maybe they can use some of the extra revenue from the pay cut that they're applying to their partners to keep the website off. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even gonna say I'm not even gonna say it. I'm not even gonna say I don't wanna get in trouble. You said 80% of it? No, I said hundred percent. And then I said I'm not gonna say it as if I had something that I was holding back because like it, it's even spicier to make you think that I'm holding something back. But actually, I was holding nothing back. I just don't have anything else to say. Oh, dude, we got badges again. And Joel works. It's, it's like Twitch went down. Badges stopped working. Emotes stopped working. But Joel is eternal for whatever reason. I guess because better Twitch TV isn't run on Twitch or by Twitch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Look, my ass is like two minutes late to 20 minutes late for every stream and I work from home. I'm not gonna like backseat a major company, like a an Amazon subsidiary that has a lot of moving parts and, you know, hundreds to thousands of employees spread across several teams. I'm just saying. But I'm just saying like if the AWS costs for Twitch are so high, can't you just charge yourself less because you own the... It just like, I'm, I'm not an accountant. It just doesn't make sense to me. Thoughts on low-rise jeans for men? I don't know, man. You know what's weird about fashion? Nice shot. As I take a seat, even though the hole's not even close to being over. Shit looks great now. That would have looked horrendous. 15 years ago. And the only thing that changed is us. You ever think about that? Like, nothing changed except for our mindset. Like, if I... I would see someone out today and be like, whoa, they're very fashionable. Their knees have no uh, denim on them. They're wearing jeans, but there's no knees. They've got their pants cuffed up 17 times. They're wearing high-top sneakers with even higher-top socks and a, a crop-top jean jacket. And I'm like, whoa, they're so fashionable. 15 years ago, I would have been like, they look like an idiot. Can't they just pop their collar like a normal person? It's not sarcasm. I'm being serious. I didn't even curve it. What is this? This is the worst shot in history. Man hits worst golf shot in history, asked to leave. But like, that's what's cool and weird about fashion. I'm not a fashion guy. But if you took the most fashionable person in the whole mall from 2008 and you put them in 2023 you would be like this person is a time traveler and then in every photo they would probably be going like this so what's crazy is what you think is like hot as hell right now in like 10 years is probably gonna look like duck face looks now you're gonna be like what the hell why were we all wearing high-rise jeans and crop tops what were we thinking but like when you're there your family, dude. Yeah, it, listen, I live in a fairly fashionable city, to be honest with you. Just because I'm out of the North Road Plaza, don't, don't think that I'm living in Burnaby. My ass is not going to Metro Town. I'm going to Pacific Center, okay? We did make the finals, though. There is a new trend. Maybe it's not super new, but there is a current trend. I can only describe as mom jeans. Are mom jeans in right now? Don't give me... They, they look good just in this sense, I guess, that they look contemporary, you know? Cool people are wearing mom jeans. Ergo, you look cool when you're wearing mom jeans. I just... I, I guess I never thought that mom jeans would make it to the zeitgeist, but... But they have. I can't really, like, act like it was better when 
my generation was in charge of fashion because we were all wearing like true religion jeans with like embroidered pockets and like idiotic stuff like that. I don't know what men's fashion is because I'm a 34 year old dad. I wear Dewar khakis or jeans, um, blunt stones with the cuffs rolled up once just so I don't, well, honestly, just so they don't like, you know, run along the floor. What happened to Ellen? And then like uh, my own merchandise and a puffy winter jacket on top. I would call him, I would say I'm I'm a little norm core right now. Damn, he's dripped out. Ooh, hello Chibli by the way. Hello. Okay. Ooh, dude, I forgot there's new merch too. Oh my god. It's the Morpheus glasses. And Corey's hat. I can't wear those hats. My my forehead is too big. That's not a joke. It's hard to find a hat that that flatters me. But I'm I'm sad to lose the the Tour de France glasses, but I mean It takes precedent. <laughs> is there extra Morpheus drip? Okay, honestly, this kind of goes insane. Let me make a, I'll make myself fashionable, okay? I mean, this is if you wanted to be, if you wanted to be sheeshed at in public. I don't really aspire to that, but that is pretty sick. Listen, nothing, nothing really fits too well. I think we, we got to dump the hat and stay hideous. I mean, the bucket is kind of funny, too. Just, you know, run this and then let, let me just try it with no hat. Let me see how I feel with no hat. Dude, I mean, that's kind of sick. I, I kind of like this, too. There's a lot of great stuff here. Sheesh court. I mean, that is... This is crazy. This is... Let's do it. Let's become the world's oldest Zoomer. Me, after one day of shopping at uh, Uniqlo. Zaddy Moan. Okay, what is Zaddy? It's a hot Bowser, right? Because I saw somebody on a Peloton that I was chasing today. Their name was Big Zaddy. And I shit you not, directly ahead of them on the leaderboard, I've talked about Pedal for Wine, Pedal for Pinot, Pedal for Whiskey, like all these, like alcoholic peloton names i kid you not their name was pedal for Gru, and they had a minion uh avatar and their demographic info said male in his 60s so i don't think he was being ironic i think he was be he was being authentic because <laughs> sarcasm was invented in i don't know like 1987 or something it was so good did you see the new Ari Aster movie poster coming out where Joaquin Phoenix plays multiple characters clump style? Holy fuck. The perfect movie doesn't exist, serial? It's like Midsummer meets The Nutty Professor 2 The Clumps, starring Joaquin Phoenix. I'm, I'm there day one. Do you like anime? Chibli, don't pretend to be like a normal chatter, okay? Don't pretend to be one of those people who shows up and is like, how do you feel about pineapple on pizza? You're a, you're a main character. Are you saying anime enjoyers aren't normal? Listen. <laughs> I like Japanese animated films. I don't care for the television medium. But dude, you want? I'll watch some uh, Kimi no Nawa. I'll watch some Ghost in the Shell. I think I'm still eliminated. I'll watch some Miyazaki movies. I mean, Ghost in the Shell is is got one of the greatest uh, soundtracks of all time. Nah, 
I really thought I might rank up a little bit there. Plus, Batu wears the same glasses in the movie that I wear um, in Switch Sports. So as far as I'm concerned, he's pretty cool. Probably not going to wear that. Um, that being said, I've only seen the Scarlett Johansson movie. Is the animated remake any good? It's amazing you know his name. Yo, I know Ghost in the Shell. Just because I don't watch My Hero Academia season 45. Also, there's nine movies now and four video games. Like, it doesn't mean I don't appreciate Kino Cinema. Do you know My Hero Academia people? Yeah. Um, All Might. I, that, it, I searched in my brain. I searched for it. And I knew it was in there. You catch me doing the Benedict Cumberbatch in, in the filing cabinet in my mind. I knew that All Might was in there somewhere. What about Berserk? Guts? Duh. <laughs> Daegu is in My Hero Academia. Oh, do they stop by uh, Samdak Sobangso? Also known as the fire department that you tell taxi drivers to take you to when you want to go to a downtown bar. Shila Hamnida, Sambak Sobang Soju Seo. It probably sounds like pure shit, but they're like, cut him some slack. Let's take him on a ride. 20 miles an hour is no joke. Kill it. Kill the momentum. Kill the momentum. Kill the momentum. Kill the... I need you to kill it. I need you to cut it. Not bad. Hard putt, but not bad. Probably the greatest putt ever made by me in Switch Sports Golf. The fact that we didn't get a replay there is crazy. What are your thoughts on people not showering regularly? It's just... This, we've been down this road so many times. <laughs> I think you should shower as much as you need to shower to not be stinky. But not so much like you... Let me put it this way. If, if I had to condense it and crystallize my sentiment on showering down to a, a single statement... I think people are way more concerned about showering too often. It's like the, I feel the same way like when people are like, oh, I'd like to go to the gym, but I don't want to do two bicep curls and accidentally like not be able to tie my shoes. Like, I think the level at which, and I'm not a dermatologist to be fair, but I have to imagine the level at which showering actually becomes harmful for you either physically or psychically, is probably more than most people would ever do unless they were experiencing a bout of mental illness. I, okay. I put it in like the same camp as when people are like, well, whenever someone's like, I only shower once a week, it's actually good for you. It's like the same kind of pseudoscience to me as like, I poop on a squatty potty. You don't know, oh, you use a normal toilet? You don't know how bad that is for your colon. Meanwhile, I have a colonoscopy, and the doctor says, looks good to me. Anyway, like, I shower once a day. If I showered less, I would smell worse. If I showered more, I don't think I would smell better. I think I would just, I mean, I would just be playing with it at that point, but you don't have hair, though. Why would you shower every day? Because I work out every morning. Even when I didn't work out, I still showered every day, though. Is six showers a week acceptable? I don't really care, like, how much you shower. Are you stinky? If you're not stinky, you don't have to shower. I don't really see what the negative to showering is. It's just part of my daily routine. Well, we're hovering. I also feel like it's like, I don't know, and this is just for me. I think showering... For me, it is necessary every day, because otherwise my ass would legit be stinky. However, I also feel the same way about showering that a lot of people feel about maybe making their bed, which is that even if there's no reason to do it, it's part of my daily routine, and it sends a signal to me that is like, the day is now beginning. 
Because if I, if I don't take a shower or I delay taking a shower, it's like an unconscious flag that's like, I haven't actually begun my day yet. Now, I don't make my bed because it just seems like a bit of a waste of time. But, but if you do, I imagine that's part of the appeal. It's just something I do. Before, before the day begins, I, I must shower. Thoughts on evening showers? It's however you like it. But I think I do some of my, my most sweating in the evening, quite frankly. So I, I shower in the morning after working out, and then I'm good for the rest of the day. But however it works for you, so be it's you know it's the same with working out. Some people work out in the evening. Some people work out in the morning. It's just whatever you get used to. Is it okay to not shower for two weeks if you don't smell? I mean, listen. I think you probably smell, but I I guess sure it's okay. It sounds like you're not leaving your house anyway, so, like, why would I care? When I stop showering, it usually means I'm more depressed, so I use it as a mental gauge. I, I hear you, because what you're saying, I think, holy cow, someone got 18 points. If you're depressed, just shower, right? Is that the... <laughs> Forehead? People are going to be stinky, but, um, like... Inevitable, maybe? I don't know. You didn't add it? No, I'm never going to add a Vanessa Hudgens emote. I'm just going to reference it and then wait for someone on the subreddit to make a post that is like, Hey, can someone explain um, inevitable maybe to me? How's the thumb? Thank you for asking. I think we're at the point where it's not changing. Like, I, at this point, the thumb is fine. The nail looks horrendous. I think I just have to wait for that dark purple line to grow out and when it grows out to the to the top it'll I'll, I'll cut it or whatever and then it'll be gone it's not gonna fall off it, i think it would have fallen off by now like it's not like i'm tell, i'm pulling on it right now there's sensation but it's not like fallen like it's it's affixed to the to the flesh I had the exact same thing five months ago and it fell off. Yeah, but I'm not you. I didn't say built different. I just said we're different people. I don't care even if it does fall off. I'll just rock a, I'll, I'll rock a psychotic hand or something. Look at this drip. Maybe my next glasses should be those glasses. What do you think? Holy cow, this is a hot lobby still. Tom's still ahead of me by six points. He, his ass got a bogey. The Salt Bay glasses. Dude, I should get some prescription Salt Bay sunglasses. Think about this, because I, I don't want to have to hit around the tree. Do not put me behind the tree. What if we split the difference and get a rare betwixt opportunity here? With no wind, it's easier to place the shot. Put me under the tree. Oh, don't put me in the rough. Sorry, there's an incredibly large truck going by. I thought it was an earthquake. Listen, the only way we're making it is to go crazy. That's not even close. Clinically insane. That hurt. I'm not gonna deny the pain that I feel there. I know you want answers. And this isn't what you wanna hear right now, but what's up? Ah. I'm crazy! I used to dream about days like this. Look at this. 
the bounce, the backspin, the ring around the rosy. I think we still get eliminated. <laughs> But what a shot. Holy cow. Please let me see some pars on the top. Oh! <laughs> Good game. By one. Still, what a shot, man. Holy cow. That's worth it. Prediction started 50 minutes for me with no result. Listen, okay? I know it's a lot to ask you to go back, but I w there was a point where this website wasn't just like methadone clinics for gambling addicts. We, there used, we used to be a proper website, okay, about entertainment, about the streaming product on the screen, and a little bit of entertainment that came from the chat itself. It wasn't all about meaningless accruing of channel points, okay? You may have to, to just revert your mindset to a, a more base level and shake off the chains of the luxuries to which we've become accustomed to for a little bit. But if you do, I think you'll find a deeper level of satisfaction. I'm going to continue. Nintendo, I'm going to make the executive decision to continue here. Error. Paid online. I was pissed when I went to the Canucks game, too. Because you may remember last... Maybe it was two years ago at this point. I saw the Leafs at Canucks. And, of course, it was 90% Leafs fans. Because a third of Canada's population lives and grew up in the greater Toronto area. And the dude uh, who was walking into the arena at the same time as us was like, I put 60 bucks on Austin Matthews to score four goals. Anyway, the Canucks won 2-1. So his ass did not get the payout let's put it that way and i was like that's why you never gamble idiot in my head i don't want to start a fight everyone's like eight pints deep at the at the game um when we were at the islanders at canucks games a game i should say there was a group of three young guys behind us and one of them said i just put 50 bucks on bo horvat to score the first goal guess who scored the first goal 99% of gamblers quit before they have their big payout. He is the 1%. My buddy won 40k on a six-way parlay. Did he quit gambling like immediately after that? Because otherwise, it's just a matter of... And I'm not even being a hater. It's statistically guaranteed that it's just a matter of time until he gives the gains back to those who we took it from in the first place. Have you seen the guy who won $500,000 on a 20-way parlay? Okay, but like, listen, this stuff is, for entertainment value, sure. But like, you have to acknowledge that it seems like hitting a 20-way parlay is like easier to replicate than winning a lot of money on, a, on the lottery. But it's exactly the same. In fact, it might even, you know, if gambling has one hater, it's me. But like, if anything, sports gambling is more insidious because A, it's actually fun, and B, there is an illusion of skill, like stock picking. No disrespect if Kathy Woods in the chat. Odds of hitting 20-way parlay, assuming a 50-50 chance, is 0.05 to the power of 20. No, sorry. Like, li listen, I think we did the math slightly wrong. Is it not 0.5 to the power of 20? I mean, it, it, it changes the result from 0.00000000095 to like 0.00000095, but still. Dude, you underestimated how easy it is by a factor of 10. Instead of 1 in 3 billion, it's, it's 1 in 300 million. No, actually, it's like 20 extra zeros. Oh, yeah, th actually, that makes way more sense. Because this, you're, you're... Twitch went down again? Can't we find somebody in San Francisco that knows how the internet works? They haven't all moved to Austin yet, have they? That absolutely had to go in. We... we I thought it said eagle. <laughs> I, I literally... My brain read eagle. Please tell me these are pars. 
please. I need, I need, actually, I need somebody above me to bogey. Please. Please. We're torched. We played a good round of golf, too. I mean, you just got to give an easy clap to the other golfers. They played a great game. We're out by one. To Joel. <laughs> That's brutal. And yet somehow perfect. I like that this doesn't tilt you as much as other competitive games. Well, honestly, like, you know what it is? Is that, like, probably at least part of it? Part of it in golf is that ain't nobody to blame but yourself. Even if it's not a teammate's fault in a team-based game, it's really easy to just be like, well, if my teammate was better, that wouldn't have happened. And whoever designed the course. Well, th like, I just wish they weren't so tree-pilled, but that's okay. But, like, Rumbleverse? Well, in Rumbleverse, the servers were fucked up, like, every day. Twitch did not eat your points, okay? You're gonna get it. They just gotta restart the blockchain, okay? Listen, all you can spend your points on is gambling anyway. <laughs> Did you get dopamine out of the gambling? Then no problem. Then, then you got what you paid for. Okay, follow your own advice. This is a 3.1 with backspin. Oh, <laughs> never mind. It looks fantastic. I take back my mini-me impression. And the backspin was good. Nice it kept us from, from overrunning onto the fringe. Okay, congrats, Joe. You're very good. And I'm pure ass. I'm pure anus. I didn't account for friction. Birdie, birdie, birdie. Here we go. Birdie, birdie, birdie. My ass with the best approach getting par. If only my teammate didn't buy boots. Nice chip in birdie. Wow, Dyer can chip in for a birdie. And you're out here buying boots instead of uh, salve, tango, uh, and two branches? I'm Dota talking. Jesus and Mary chain voice. Some Dota talking. It's crazy. Someone, I think Apollo was telling me you don't even have to buy wards in Dota anymore. What am I supposed to do as support then? My ass actually has to like deny creeps now. I can't just be like, support, what are you doing? Um, I bought the wards, idiot. Go die. Now I've actually got to be like good at the game. Come on. Yo, thank you. I picked your key and improved it. Oh. You're like Q from uh, 007. Did you put like a... <laughs> you put a, a laser-mounted rocket launcher onto the, onto the car key? Yeah. Let's go. That'll be handy in traffic. Well, that's a laughing emoji. It's they're, they're laughing at me because I just got like a double bogey even though I was on the green on the first uh, the first stroke. Is that bad? It's horrendous, yeah. It was god awful. Oh no, you're eliminated. Well, I have one more hole to make up eight points. But yeah, I'd say I'm, I'm officially eliminated. I, maybe if I got a, a hole in one on a par five, ever gonna hit S rank? It just takes time, man. People overestimate how fast they can do things. They underestimate what they could do with a limited amount of time, with a, an unlimited amount of time. Let's put it that way. I don't know what I'm talking about. Boom. Nice shot. <laughs> um, don't do, don't do that, please. <laughs> I poked his bomb. I didn't want to say it because I didn't want people to be mad at you. But yeah, she she. I mean, I w wouldn't say she poked my bum. I would say I would be more specific. I poked his bum hole. Nice 
nice shot. I'm just saying, if you reverse the genders, my ass would be on like a probably a permanent ban right now <laughs> from from all public facing activities forever. Except the presidency. True, true. You, you know what? She, she walked into my office. She poked me in the butt. She's taking, she took like 70 bucks in cash off of my desk and she's walking out. Like, what the hell did I do? This is abusive. That's my emergency cash for like the one in six days that the entire cellular network goes down in Canada and I have to use cash to pay for something at, at the grocery store checkout. Is she drunk? No, I think she probably just, because the baby's at daycare she, today, she probably like cleaned the bathroom and was like mad at me because the bathroom was messy or something. So then she came in here and said, I'm going to get him back by poking his butthole and then stealing 70 bucks off his desk. That's, that's my diagnosis. She can tell me how, how accurate I am or, or inaccurate. <laughs> she should? What are you talking about? <laughs> then I should get a little kickback for paying the day of mortgage. I should get at least like a 20 back out of, the, out of the cash pocket then. Thank you. Not the asshole. Your house, your rules. Now I realize she was probably poking me in the behind to see if I had any, uh, any gold coins stashed in my back pockets. Any medical items in your back pocket? What the hell is that supposed to mean? The answer is no. <laughs> oh, tar it's a Tarkov joke. Okay. I understand now. You know what it, it drives me crazy? So we've had all these new um, weather events, right? Heat Dome was like a year and a half ago now. We started to have atmospheric rivers. All the boomers are like, atmospheric river. Oh, when I was growing up, they just called it rain. That's because they were stupid back then. They, didn't have, they weren't as smart as we are now. We now know different delineations that can allow us to be more specific about weather events. They'd be like, oh, when snow was invented, they'd be like, oh, we just used to call it um, fluffy rain. There could be like a, the weather report could say apocalyptic volcanic eruption and people over the age of 55 would be like, it's just a bit of magma. <laughs> Is this your... We, oh, apocalypse? Don't you think that's a little severe? He's crazy. That felt great. Tough hole. And inch by inch, day by day, we're going to get better. It might not be... It might be... But when you look at it on the 10-year... On the and then when you look at it on the 20-year... Hey, you get the idea. Emil, my man. What you just said motivated me to never quit streaming. Let's go, Chad. You're welcome. I can't say what I was going to say because my wife is here. But what I was going to say is you might as well quit if you're just going to play Mahjong again. I'm sorry. It was, I don't mean it. I don't actually mean it. It was just a joke. It was just a, it was a simple joke. This is for par? Par this. I fuck you! Are you crazy? That was in the hole! Kate, I should get a crossbody bag. Would that fit with my with my look right now? Am I cool enough to get a crossbody bag like my me is currently using? Did she actually just type um? It's a zoomer aesthetic? Yeah, so what? It looks cool. You do you. Oh my god. She said you do you no judge. Holy cow. First she comes into my room, pokes me in the butt. 
steals $70 cash off my desk. I ask her a layup question. She gets the wrong answer. Okay, well, here's the thing, Kate. Because you said I'm not gonna, I can't pull off a crossbody bag in so many words, you know what I'm gonna wear? One of those like swag bags you get from a, a software engineering conference, which is just a, a vinyl a bag with like a sponsor on it and then two ropes that go right here and cut into your skin and even if you're in good shape they make it look like you have large male breasts how does that sound how does that sound no kate is very tidy i don't need to do a kate desk audit the only there's two things and they're so minor but i feel the need to strike back so i'm gonna strike back okay one is when she's drinking a bottled beverage, and this drives me crazy, she never puts the cap back on the bottle when she's not drinking it. Which I think would be fine if she drank like a 300 milliliter bottle in like 10 minutes. But instead she'll take like, she'll drink like a third of the bottle and then leave the bottle sitting on like the coffee table without the lid on it for like half an hour or something like that. And I know you're going to be like, well, just don't spill. But here's the thing. Nobody ever expects themselves to spill. I'm not going to say that one time she did turn a Soylent upside down into her purse because it didn't have the cap on it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to out her like that. What's the second thing? Well, I'm not going to say that when she's done drinking like a Soylent bottle, I'm not going to say that she takes it down from her room to the kitchen island and leaves it on the island rather than throwing it in the recycling bin, which is literally uh, one foot away from the island. I'm not going to say it because, I mean, I, I'm not trying to make any enemies out here. I said it was minor. My wife does these exact same things. <laughs> Women. <laughs> can't, can't live with them, can't live without them. They do be shopping. You're the ass. <laughs> what? For what? <laughs> for making a joke? Oh, it's illegal to tell the truth and tell jokes now? Kate, did you get some lunch? Do you want, do you want me to get you some lunch today? I want to make up for all the character assassination that I did with the, all the Soylent discourse. Holy cow. What it? Six people tied at 27 points? No? Okay. Should, should I get you some lunch? I am eating lunch right now. Hold on. I am eating lunch. Okay. Well, I'm going to go out and get lunch. I'm, it's, I think I'm just going to... Do you have like $70 in cash that I could borrow? <laughs> I want none back. I want some backspin. But not full power. I love, I love this. I love this shot. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> um, excuse me. That's one way to break a tie. Ooh. <laughs> that backspin haters are like, okay, okay. In that, sit in that one unique situation, backspin was the right choice, but I simply would have aimed so I didn't need backspin in the first place. Hold on, let's read this comment out loud before I read it in my head. My wife is a vet tech, and she says if I ever need a catheter, she'll put it in for me since she does it all the time on pets. Am I the asshole, or do women be shopping? Honestly, I think you should take advantage of whatever privileges you get from your spouse's occupation. I would probably trust it. Like, we get perks on from, from Twitch from time to time. They'll be like, hey, like we're sending you a box of stuff. Sometimes they send one to me. Sometimes they send one to Kate. Sometimes they send one to both of us. We be picking stuff out of each other's boxes. I'm not wearing Twitch socks right now, but I could be. Nice shot. But, like, if my spouse was, like, uh... A janitor or something like that? You bet I'd be making her ass take the garbage out. She's a pro. What the hell? What are you, what are you what's wrong with that? 
I'm being gaslit all day today. Oh, that's way too hard. Okay, at least I'm on the fringe. You are a piece of garbage. That's what you are? It's okay. The albatross is going to carry, man. Even with even birdie versus par, the albatross is going to carry because the albatross beat the eagle by four points. Oops. Wow. You guys weren't even close. Maybe try uh, like training a little bit harder next year. It's, uh, every two days on YouTube, I post a video that's called like the greatest shot I ever made. But that... The shot we made there was actually, in my opinion, more impressive than the hole-in-one we made. Like, the hole-in-one was pretty lucky, because we, you know, we aimed to be close, and then we got lucky, and it hit the flag and then dropped into the hole. This one was like, we aimed to get it inside the hole. Okay, so check it out. So, by the way, casting spoilers for Doctor Strange 2 incoming. I'd like to apologize for that. If you haven't seen Doctor Strange 2 and you, you're interested in it, close the tab, okay? Who's in Doctor Strange? Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen, Rachel McAdams, Benedict Wong, John Krasinski, Patrick Stewart, Chiwetel Ejiofor. So we Robert Pattinson, I'm trying I'm thinking you can go to Tenant. Kenneth Branagh, Death on the Nile, and then you have access to every actor that's ever existed. Taylor Lautner was in Cheaper by the Dozen too. Kristen Stewart has been in Adventureland with Ryan Reynolds, who was with... Listen, we can get there, okay? So I think we're going to go, let, let me get started here. I think we're going to start with, well, let me scroll for a second. Anna Kendrick, it's an interesting one. She's in Pitch Perfect with who though? Ah, Paul Jarrett, of course, that's another classic. No offense if he's watching the stream right now. Um, I'm going to go Kristen Stewart. I'm going to go Adventureland. I know it seems a little crazy. It's probably not the fastest way to do it. And we're trying to get to... Let's see, pick a target, okay? Let's say we're trying to get to... I wouldn't say John... Wait, I'm going back. Take me to Twilight. Hold on, I'm cheating. Because I'm I'm going right back. To try the, I know how to do this now. It is Twilight Eclipse, Dakota Fanning, War of the Worlds, Tom Cruise, um, the, the, um, ba, 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 Tomorrow Never Dies, Live, Die, Repeat, The Day After Tomorrow, Edge of Tomorrow, Emily Blunt, A Quiet Place, Part 1, John Krasinski, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. That's, I found my, I found my line. It's a bit of an unusual one. I wouldn't say we went necessarily through main cast there. Martin Starr? Oh, that's true. Martin Starr is literally in Spider-Man. <laughs> but is Benedict, well, you could get there. You would just go into Spider-Man, Tom Holland. Like Endgame or Infinity War, Benedict Cumberbatch. Anyway, that's not bad. That's a reasonable trip. Four is not too bad. I'll do. I know Kate's live. I'm gonna do actoral real quick though. Actoral. Ah, that's a good one too. Robert Pattinson, 
to uh, the lighthouse to Willem Dafoe. And then from Willem Dafoe, Tom Holland, to Benedict Cumberbatch, to like Endgame, or, or sorry, to, to Doctor Strange 2. Okay. These are in order of their box office gross. Adjusted for inflation. 1997, what the heck is dot, 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 dot. It, it, ah, it's, da, 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 da. This is an, an actor or an actress who predominantly, most of their most famous work, it, it's still coming out, but was also more like in the 90s and the early 2000s. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. But why did the... Wait, these ones are just listed chronologically? I've been lied to. But this... Just this filmography makes me think of Brad Pitt. 1991 to 2022. To me, that seems Brad Pittable. Brad Pitt. Wrong. They are younger than Brad Pitt. And have never been in a movie with Brad Pitt. <laughs> okay. Um... And they're still active right now. Drama, drama, we 2007, Western. That's not the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. We got a war movie that isn't Fury. We got an action thriller from 2020. This might sound a little crazy. Just toss me a Jennifer Garner. They are between 50 and 59 years of age. They've never been in a movie with Jennifer Garner. <laughs> Adventure, drama, war. Still making movies? Between age 50 and 59? What's your best movie? 8.5 in the year 2000? I mean, that's pretty good. Oh! Wait, but what's this from... Oh, no, this is, it's Russell Crowe. 2000 is Gladiator, 8.5. 2022 is Thor, Love, and Thunder. What the heck was he in in, in 2021 that was so well-liked? Blank, blanks, blank, blank? Zack Snyder's Justice League? I guess review bombing can be positive, too. Um, anyways, Russell, Russell Crowe, guaranteed. Plus two, plus two. I thought Brad Pitt was a pretty good first guest. That's a good actoral, though. Um, hey, thanks for watching. I'm going to send you over to my live stream, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you then. That is not what Russell Crowe looks like. It was what Russell Crowe looked like in 1999, for your information. It's morbing time. Speaking outrageously, I eat some blood. My name's Dr. Michael Morbius. I practice my craft. Oh, I am not quite morbing. Oh, I am fast in bed. Sorry. <laughs>